Good morning, everyone. So good to have you worship with us this morning. Um, again, we're here by ourselves in the church uh, recording this worship service so that you can take in um, the Holy Spirit's presence together as a church community. And this is the best we can do for uh, having community. And so I hope that as you tune in, um, you really take in God's presence and you allow him to, to speak to you and to minister to you. Um, focus in on him. You know, if, if you really got to close your eyes to, to allow God to speak to you, then I recommend you do that. But also, this week, we've, uh, thanks to Susie and um, Alex as well, they've really worked hard together to um, get the words on the screen for you this morning. And so, uh, hopefully, people in your house can tolerate your singing and you can sing loud with us. We're going to sing, Blessed Be Your Name. And there's a, an amazing... Uh, line in this uh, sign uh, in the song when it talks about um, you give and you take away, my heart will choose to say, "Blessed be your name." Do we really believe that this morning? That when God gives, but also when He takes away, "Blessed be your name." In any circumstance, can can we sing, "Blessed be the name of the Lord"? And so I challenge you to sing this, not only the words, but sing it with your heart, that even during these tough circumstances where we're isolating ourselves and we can't gather, um, and even hearing some of the, the news globally of, of how this pandemic is, is really affecting uh, society, can we still sing, blessed be the name? Do we still believe that God is good and that we can sing of his goodness? Let's do that this morning. I can see that we're maybe having some 
technical difficulties with um, the words. But hopefully, as uh, if you're going to pick the words or, or listening to us sing, you're going to sing along with the music. So um, that means you'll have to remember the words. We're going to sing Trust and Obey, an old hymn. Hopefully, it's familiar to you. And uh, the interesting part about this song is this is a song where we're singing about our trust in God, no matter what the circumstances are, and that we're going to choose to obey him no matter what's happening around us. And this song was really um, important to Amy Beth and I as there was a part in our life when we had experienced some loss and uh, we had to choose whether or not we were going to um, go to church and worship after uh, a really hard day and where we had experienced that loss. And we said, yeah, we're going to go to church. And um, due to the circumstances where we were, we ended up to church late. And we took in one song. And that one song was this song, Trust and Obey. And so that, this song really just hit us hard right when we needed to put our trust in him despite what was happening around us. And so I just encourage you, again, sing this song, trusting in the Lord, putting your trust in him. Sing it as uh, a faith offering to the Lord.
forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, amazing love. One more song, and this song is uh, really about, it's called the heart of worship. It's really why we sing. We're not singing because the music sounds great. We're not music singing because uh, to draw attention to ourselves. It's the heart, is, heart of worship is all about us connecting with God. And um, obviously, if it was just about... <laughs> the sound of the music or, or some kind of performance, uh, there's way better productions that you could tune into right now. But in terms of community, connecting with people, um, us, uh, who love you, who are part of this church, but also um, connecting with God in community, this song really attempts to bring us into that place back to the heart of worship. just to bring some 
something that's of worth that will bless your This time, uh, Susie, do we have a slide for the offering? All right. Well, we're putting up a slide for the offering, but I could just explain to you if you have a hard time seeing behind me um, that you can give by going to our website and uh, finding out how to give there, or you can call into the office too, and we'll get back to you in terms of information how to give um, as well. So obviously, in times like this where we're not gathering, um, you know, passing the plate or giving in your regular giving uh, is something that's not happening. And so we're going to really rely on the church uh, continuing to be able to operate through online giving. So please check us out uh, on our webpage, um, or if you're someone who already gives online, please continue to do so. All right, Pastor Liz is coming. Hello? Um. Try holding it down. Use mine for the time. Yours working. Here you go. Just speak into this. There you go. You know, 
starting this out, I just want to say a huge thank you to Susie and Alex. You would not believe the amount of wires and running and replugging and unplugging. So while there might not always be the perfect sound quality, they are trying very hard. Um, it's been a steep learning curve on how to create our, our sanctuary into its very own TV studio. And uh, if you take some time, send them a message saying thank you because we really wouldn't be able to do this without them. So we thank the helpers who are making things happen. We have a number of announcements. So if you miss an announcement, uh, Susie will be sending out an e-bulletin later this week or later today. And I will also take all of these announcements and put them in both our church group page and on this, uh, yeah, the North Grenville Community Church page and the North Grenville Community Group Facebook group um, so that you can have actual links to the sources of some of these. So the first announcement is this. Thomas is still preaching through 1 Corinthians, and that sermon is live and available on our North Grenville Community Church YouTube page. And if it's not up on the website yet, it will be shortly. So look for that. It is on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first part of 15. Storytime with Pastor Liz is continuing this coming week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, every weekday at 11 a.m., I'm going to read uh, a Bible story out of the Jesus Storybook Bible and the next chapter of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, if you've missed any of these chapters, Alex and I are editing the original live videos and putting them as one compilation so that you can catch up or re-listen to them. And we're also gonna make those Jesus stories available as individual segments on our YouTube page. So those should be up uh, later this week. Kids time. We have this live service for all of you and we're really happy to be able to connect and worship even when we can't be together. We are connecting while social distancing. We are still the family of God. We are still gathering together in the ways that we can. And we wanted to provide something for the children as well. So Kids Time is specific kids ministry videos based on what we would have done if we could gather together for Sunday school. Our first episode called David is Anointed can be found on our website. It can be found on our YouTube channel. And I've put um, a link to my blog that also has information about it. And so you can find those Kids Time also has a PDF for families so that you can have discussion questions and a challenge or an activity or a craft that goes with that lesson. So episode one, David is Anointed, is available and the new episode two will be available this Tuesday. There are also these Fuel Kids videos for our Cubbies, our Sparks, and our TNT Kids that are available on our YouTube channel. Anywhere else? Uh, YouTube right now. They're coming okay. to the website. Susie's telling me they are on YouTube and we have some links. I know some people have already checked them out um, and they are also going to be available eventually on the website. And I did some deliveries this past week giving out fuel books. Now, if your family hasn't been involved in fuel, fuel kids and wants to get in on Awana, um, send me a private message or email me at liz at ngccfm.ca and we can coordinate um, and connect to delivering some Awana at home material. Um, and for those who might be worried, yeah, I texted that I was on my way, I left it on the porch, I backed away, family came out, we waved from a distance, had a nice little social distancing chat and continued on. Okay, prayer is continuing with Pastor Thomas at 11.30 a.m., so that's a change. Uh, Thomas is going to meet a little bit later so that story time with Pastor Liz can happen. So prayer, 11.30 a.m., Tuesday, on this channel, North Granville Community Church's page. Um, and then Tuesday night, he's going to have a continuing with his Philippians Bible study out of chapter 3, we're on chapter three, so you can read that ahead of time. And that's going to be on Pastor Thomas's personal Facebook, and it goes live at 7.30. Um, so those are some ways you can connect. And I promise to put all of this information on our Facebook page so you can find the actual links back to these original um, live 
broadcast. Okay, memory verse time. This is our last Sunday to look at Jeremiah 29, 13. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to invite you guys to do it with me. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Should we do it one more time? I think so. How do you feel about the verse? Do you think you've memorized it? I'm going to do the actions and you try to do them, say the words without me. So that was our memory verse for March, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek. We, peek of April's memory verse. We are going to be looking in Psalm 23. So you can start reading that now and getting a heads up on memorizing from Psalm 23. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Pastor Liz. And now we're going to enter into a time of prayer. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you as a community. And Lord, my, uh, my heart longs to be with, with people, with my brothers and sisters in, in you, Jesus. We are your family. We've been adopted in by you. And yet, like a, a family that is separated for a time, uh, it hurts a bit. Lord, we confess our need for you, our need to come before you, that you would be the one who draws us together even if we can't see each other face to face, even if we can't greet and hug, we know that we can still be joined together simply by our love for you and through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would meet with each and every one of us that you would meet the longings of our hearts to be with other people. And Lord, I know there's probably some people who are introvert, more introverted, who um, enjoy time by themselves, but I think this time of so social, social isolation might even seem long for some of them. And so we pray for anyone who's struggling. Lord, we pray that you would encourage them, that your spirit would meet them. Lord, I believe that this is a time where you can speak to us as individuals. Yes, when we gather, we rely on the church to hear from you. We rely on each other uh, through our songs, through our prayers, through hearing the word preached. But Lord, I believe that during this season, as we spend more time in our own homes, Lord, would that also be a time where we spend more time in our prayer closets, Lord? As you, when you taught us to pray, to not just pray out in the open, not just pray out in public, but really, if we really want to see uh, and meet with you, God, that you reward those who do things in secret and pray in secret. And so, Lord, would our prayer closets be a place that would become more intimate and more close place to you during these uh, next weeks? And even, even if it turns into months, Lord, uh, that we have to be away from each other, Lord, we pray that there would just be a deeper intimacy with you in our prayer lives. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling with their health. And Lord, whether it be uh, the people who have contracted this virus or whether it be, Lord, those who are fearful to go to their appointments or go to the hospital or even just the doctors, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you would be with all those who are sick in this time that you would touch their bodies, that you would bring healing. 
Lord, I'm reminded about how the Apostle Paul even had a handkerchief that he prayed. He prayed over, and, and Lord, that when people touched that, Lord, they would receive your power. Lord, that's in your word, and we believe. May, maybe we don't have a handkerchief that we're passing around, but we're through the internet, Lord. We're using this resource to spread your love and to share and to connect. So I pray that, Lord, whoever's tuning into this, Lord, we pray together for those people we know who need a touch from you, God. And Lord, I pray that you would have your way in our lives so much that the fruit of the Spirit would be established in us, even as we cannot meet in the body. But Lord, that your Spirit would grow love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Lord, would you grow those fruit in our lives so that, Lord, when we are reunited, we would see the work of the Holy Spirit done in us. Lord, when the world seems to be panicking and heading in a negative direction, would we, as your church, grow closer to you? Like the Israelites wandering in the desert, let us not, Lord, complain and argue. But Lord, as you provided for them and you asked them just to be thankful, Lord, would you provide for us that we would be thankful? Lord, I'm thinking about all those who are going without work right now. Lord, would you provide for them supernaturally? For all of those who've had to go on EI, for those who are fearful that they can't make their mortgage payments, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would supernaturally provide for us. Would, would our food last longer? Would our clothes not wear out? Would, would gifts of generosity abound amongst your church? Lord, we thank you for the examples of Scripture which show that you are a God who doesn't leave us or forsake us, especially in troubled times, but that during troubled times you draw near. And so, Lord, I pray that you would draw near to us even in this moment. Church, let's just take a moment to hear from God. Uh, allow God to speak to your spirit. If there's anything, any anxious thoughts within you, surrender those and confess them before God in your heart and in your mind. And, and allow the peace that passes all understanding to come upon you. Allow God to speak to your soul, speak to your spirit in this moment. And one way that we can pray together is by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. So now's my opportunity to share from you, uh, share with you God's word. And um, in our regular church setting, I've been preaching through 1 Corinthians. And um, you can go to our website if you're one of our regular church uh, uh, attendees. And if you want to uh, follow along, you can find on our website that I'm continuing to preach through 1 Corinthians there, and that's posted on YouTube. But for those of us here who are live this morning uh, on Facebook, I wanted to uh, bring a message that uh, if you weren't going through uh, 1 Corinthians with us, that would still be applicable. And last week, I opened up Psalm 37. I opened up Psalm 37, to be honest with you, because my mother had challenged us to uh, memorize that verse. And so I thought, oh, I better read it. And then I thought, wow, this is really good to preach. And so uh, she was going to memorize the first 10 verses. And so I preached from the first 10 verses. But the whole 
um, chapter of Psalm 37 is good. So I'm going to continue on Psalm uh, 37 and pick up at verse 10. But this, the theme of this, uh, this section in this chapter really encourages us to look at this world from more than just a temporal point of view, but an eternal point of view. Now, what do I mean by that? For those of you who don't know what I mean by temporal versus eternal, uh, the reality is this, is that uh, everything around us is temporary. It has a, 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 an end date. Um, the furniture we're sitting on, um, the electricity that's passing through this, uh, this, this building, um, you know, the hairs on our head, uh, our own blood flowing through our veins, it's all temporary. Uh, and you know what? In a, in a time like this, when we could really uh, be in panic about life and death and sickness and health and all those things uh, could really cause us a lot of anxiety when we start thinking of it. And the scripture tells us, don't worry about tomorrow. Jesus said this. Matthew chapter 7, I, I believe, uh, Jesus, uh, it might have been in chapter 6 or 7, you could read through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount there, and he's preaching to the crowds, and he's telling them not to worry about tomorrow, because today has enough. And yet, uh, the scripture says, if we're going to think about any amount of time, set your mind on things that etern are eternal. Don't worry about tomorrow, but if you're going to think about the future, think about the amazing things that God has prepared for us after this life. Set your mind on things above. Uh, store up for your tre yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't destroy. Um, God really wants us to see this world in light of eternal and eternity. And eternity, uh, instead of things being temporal, which only lasts for uh, temporarily, um, eternal is, uh, means that they'll, they'll last forever. Things, things that will last forever. Our soul will last forever. Our relationship with God is meant to last forever. And so as we read from Psalm 37, I really, that's kind of like the, the, the subtext behind this. And so here we go. We're going to pick up in verse 10. A little while the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. When we're looking around the things in this world where a lot of chaos is happening, a lot of fear, a lot of panic, a lot of trouble in the news, we can often find uh, that the bad news is often reported over the good news. And we see a lot of wicked mounting, and uh, we don't hear of the goodness of God. But the Bible here says that the meek will inherit the land. And Jesus quotes this in that same sermon where he's uh, sermon on the mount where he's talking about don't worry about tomorrow. He, he starts off with the Beatitudes which say that blessed are those. And he goes on to say blessed are the meek. And so I believe Jesus is really drawing from the Psalms here when he says that. But the meek will inherit the land and will enjoy great peace. If we want peace, we need to be meek. That's not uh, proud or arrogant. Meek has a comparable to being humble. Um, the wicked look to advance their own. They look to gain things for themselves. Whereas if we're humble and we're, we, we take, uh, um, and humble um, and meek does not mean weak. Humility, you can still be strong. You're strong in your faith. You're confident in your God. You're not confident in yourself. You're confident in God. Verse 12 says, the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to, string, to bring down the poor and the needy, to slay, those, uh, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. We can see in today's world where people are fighting already for resources. People, the government has to tell people not to hoard resources like 
uh, toilet paper, but also food and also medical supplies. If you're paying attention to the new news right now, you'll see that the government is really telling people to share. And um, the word of God says that the wicked have their plots, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. You can, you can try to be the best prepper at all, and I advise our church, don't think that you need to go into some form of protection mode. Don't think that you need to build a bunker somewhere underground. Don't think that you need to have an endless supply of toilet paper and canned foods and medical supplies to be able to survive anything that might come upon the earth. Jesus warned us that tribulation would come in our lifetimes but he says that the Lord laughs because he knows the wicked day is coming he knows that eventually no matter what happens in our lifetime eventually everyone faces judgment the Bible says that it's appointed for each and every one of us death we're all going to die one day and then we'll be judged and so we should live this life generously you know, now would be a time where we'd say, oh, I got to protect my bank account. I got to protect my earnings. I got to protect my food supply. I got to protect my family. And, and we would really risk being gener uh, the ability to be generous and loving towards others and reach out be out of fear that um, we might not have enough. Instead, the Bible really promotes, even if you are afraid, even if you feel like you don't know where your next meal is coming, the generosity that it's better to give than it is to receive. You look at the woman who gave her last, um, her last amount at the offering in the temple, and Jesus saw her and she said she gave more than anyone else because she gave out her, her lack. God's watching. He's watching from an eternal point of view. He's observing how we be behave, and he's... he's He's not just seeing how we behave when things are good, when we have plenty, how much we'll give when we have lots. He's observing how we're acting and how we're behaving no matter what the circumstances and even when the circumstances seem to be evil all around us. Verse 16 says, Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord, and, the, and their inheritance will endure forever. See, this is the promise of Scripture, that God has good things for those who love Him. Here's the thing. We might never see it in this lifetime. You might see rich people getting richer and poorer people getting poorer. But the Bible says here, it's better to have very little and keep your righteousness than have much and yet be wicked in your heart. Because the wicked will be broken, but God will uphold the righteous, it says in verse 17. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord. See, here's the reality is God knows how many days we're going to live, whether we have plenty or whether we have uh, uh, lots. God knows the amount of days we're going to live if we're rich or if we're poor. God, the, the Psalm, uh, I think it's 139. Amy Beth, it's one of your favorite Psalms. Yeah, Psalm 139. It says uh, that the Lord has written down in his book every day before one of them has come to be. Before we ever lived one day, God knew how many days we would be given. To me, that's comforting. That no matter how I live my life in terms of trying to protect myself and hoard things to myself and try to inherit lots and become wealthy, it doesn't matter. You can't add to your days because God already has them numbered. And so I'd rather live this life generously and for God and in a right relationship with God, not trying to advance myself, but advance the kingdom of God. Verse 19 says, In times of disasters, they will not wither. In days of fa famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. It's kind of weird because we think, oh, in order to protect myself, i got to become like maybe this, uh, this prepper and, and, and really uh, be, have, keep as much to myself. But the Bible is saying here, it's the Lord who actually endures us. It's the Lord who allows us to, uh, 
in times of disaster not wither, and to enjoy times where there's even famine around. How can we know this? Well, look throughout Scripture. I mean, uh, you got the Israelites in the desert and God provides for them. You have Elijah, a prophet, who is wandering through the wilderness and, and even becoming depressed. And the Lord tells him uh, to take food from, uh, from ravens that provide for, for him and, and to get some rest. God will provide for us. I believe God can provide for us supernaturally. You look at the life of Jesus, and Jesus is, is preaching, and he's preaching to crowds, and they go out into the wilderness because there was no room for them in the city for all of them to gather. And so he takes them out into the, into, into the open fields, and he's preaching to them in the open fields, and they're, they're about a days away from getting any food. They're a days away from a marketplace, and, and the disciples say, how are we going to feed these people? You should send them back to town. And Jesus tells them, no, you're going to feed them. How are they going to feed them? Well, they find a few loaves of bread and a few fish, and on multiple occasions this happens. It happens twice in Scripture. One, we believe, could have been for uh, uh, the Israelite community that Jesus was preaching to, and maybe the second time would have been for the Gentiles so that God could show that he can provide for all people in times where there might not be food around. And God took those loaves and those fishes and he provided for those crowds even when they were far away from food. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. If you believe in God's supernatural provision, you can continue to live a life without worry, without fear, believing that God will take care of us. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemy will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. Here's the reality. Even if a plague takes us out, even if we all get sick and die, I know this, that sounds dreadful and dire, but even if those things happen, God's looking out for us for eternity. See, the there's three men in the Old Testament and they were told to bow down to a statue or they'd be thrown into a burning furnace. And they knew that even if they died, it was better to not give in to that request. And they told the king of Babylon who was making them bow down to this idol, they said, you know what, you can throw us into that fire and I believe that God will save us. But even if God doesn't save us, we're not going to bow down to you because we're going to continue to keep our righteousness before God. Why would they do that? I think because they had the hope of eternity. If they lived right with God in their lives, that they knew that they could spend eternity with God. But then God still protected them, even in the fiery furnace. That's found in the book of Daniel. And so I believe this, we need to have the same attitude that in this life, yes, eventually this life will end. Eventually something will take us out. Hopefully not this virus, but something eventually and so we should live for eternity. If you're listening to this and you don't know what I'm talking about, live for eternity, I, I'm going to tell you right now, this is how we live for eternity. Eternity, Jesus said this, that this is eternal life, to know the Father through the Son and to believe on the one that the Father sent, that is the Son. So to have an eternal mindset, you need to know the eternal God. You need to know the everlasting God, the God who's outside of time. If you want to know that there's life beyond this life, you need to know God who lives forever. And the promise is this, that if you choose to have a relationship with this God who lives forever, who wants a loving relationship with us, simply by believing in him, he will enter into a relationship with you by adopting you into your family, into his family. You become one of his children. You become a participant with God in this life, and your soul will live with God for eternity. What an amazing promise. Church, if there's any a time where the world's going to want you to panic about what's happening, in, in my lifetime, I don't think there's been a greater time where they're trying to get you to think about the here and the now in this moment. 
And I believe as a church, we need to send the opposite message. What matters more right now is your eternal soul, that you get right with God, that you pray a simple prayer. God, I want to know you. I want you to be a part of my life. I want to be in a right relationship with you. And just ask God, God, would you forgive me for any, anything that I've done that would offend you, that would keep me from you? If there's anything that I've done in my life that keeps me from you, I want to turn from that, and I want to turn towards you, God. Would you come and fill me with your Holy Spirit? See, God is Father in heaven who loves us, who sent his Son to rescue us, to bring us into relationship with him. And then when Jesus left, he said, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and you can know right now. And those of you who believe have already believed, believed, uh, and you're part of our church, and you've, you continue to believe, and you continue to have fellowship with us because of you believe, you know the benefit of the Holy Spirit, that even now you can sense the Holy Spirit in your home where you're at, knowing God's with you. I sense the Holy Spirit, even now. God is with us, he's in us, and he has not abandoned us, no matter how bad the circumstances get. Be encouraged, church. And for those of you who who desire that relationship with God, you can have the Holy Spirit living in you. All you have to do is claim Jesus as your Lord. Say, Jesus, you're my Lord. I invite you in. Forgive me. And the God who loves you will bring love into your life, will bring faith into your life, will bring hope into your life. Isn't that good news? All right, well, I'm going to invite Amy Beth back up, and we're going to sing another song. God is good. Amy Beth's coming forward now. I'm going to get my guitar. And uh, Amy Beth appropriately picked the song, Lord, I Need You. There's only one thing we need in times of trouble, and that's the Lord. No matter how bad things can get, I can't find my pick. Good thing I got another one. Uh-oh. Juggling here. We're live. <laughs> Where did I put that other pick? I like it better. Oh, well. Here we go. That's all right. I got one here.
fulfillment of every day moving forward, whether it be here in this life or for all of eternity, we need you. And you're the only one who's going to get us through this life. No matter what troubles or tribulations or, or viruses or whatever we face, we need you. You're the one who's going to take us through. But as you take us through whatever we have to face, Lord, we believe that you want our hearts and our minds to think about the eternal things. And so, Lord, draw us closer to you. Help keep our minds on eternity. Help us know it's better to live for all of eternity than just to live for now. Thank you for this psalm. Thank you for your word. Thank you for our time together. Lord, I just pray that as we continue to go through our day, Lord, that we would sense your presence with us as we go through our week. We would find ways to connect with each other, whether it be through the internet or through phone calls. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would help us to encourage each other as a church, Lord. We love you, God. We thank you. Lord, I want to pray uh, one thing. I think I forgot to pray for earlier, uh, Lord, is for our health care workers. Lord, we pray. We have a hospital just right here. And Lord, I know the hospitals in the cities are, 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 are fearing of being overwhelmed as well. So Lord, we pray for all of our health care workers. We pray, Lord, that you would protect them. And Lord, that you would give them hope. And Lord, we especially pray, Lord, that they would turn to you in prayer as uh, they may fear troubled times ahead. But Lord, help them also keep their eyes on eternity. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us in worship, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.